Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, got a plant in the mail. I'm sure it's in the title of the video. How much explaining do I need to do before I pop this thing open? Have a fun alocasia in here. A really nice variegated one. One that I've had my eyes on for a while and for some reason was waiting until the winter to get one. I don't, it's not winter, but in my mind, once the plants are inside, it's winter. And this is from Etsy shop called Tropify Plant Shop. Seems like they have a good selection of stuff on there. Begonias, African violets, various aeroids. I think I saw some elasticas on their page as well. I don't think I've ordered from them before, but they do look familiar. So I may, maybe got a Gloriosum from them at some point. I can't remember. Also, this is just because I decided I want to move this plant into that pot. So I put that pot inside of that pot. So I don't forget that I need to drill a hole in that pot. I want to make sure it stayed over there looking weird. So I wouldn't forget what's going on with it. Packaging looks good. Nice insulated foil pack on the inside that only covers the sides of it. So I guess that's more for protecting it from everything around it. These foil things, if something's not completely enveloped in it, then it doesn't, it's kind of pointless. Except for cushioning, it's nice and rigid. So that probably did something. Is it taped down? Feels like it's taped down. That's good, taped down is good. Just means it's gonna be more secure inside the box. Looks like they did a good job packaging the plant. They did, look at that. That's what I like to see, which is what I like. When you can open up the box, it almost looks like a diorama because the plant was taped in there very securely. So it can make getting them out of the packaging more difficult. Generally worth it, since the plant's not smushed and all, you know, weird and wonky looking when it comes in the mail. But what happened with pancake butt aeonium over here, all they had to do is tape it up, put it on the side of something, that side wouldn't have flattened out. There's a thank you for being a VIP customer. Use the code VIP. I don't know if I should read this off to everybody, so I'm not going to. Didn't they throw into all of their packages, but I, that's up to them to give that out, not me. So maybe if you order one, you'll get that too. I don't know. Heat pack on the bottom by the roots. Good. It's the part of the plant you want to keep alive the most, right? Far so good. You ready to see it? Oh, it's so it's so little. I was expecting something so much more grandiose when I pulled the paper up. Can you even see it? It is beautiful though, isn't it? Wow. Look at those leaves, that is gorgeous. Go ahead and get all this packaging off of here. It's coming off very easily. Masking tape and just a light layer of saran wrap. Nothing ridiculous and some floof. Whatever this stuff is called, polyester, polyfill. It is very little. Not what I was expecting from the pictures that they had, that's for sure. In the picture on the listing, it showed a, a forearm holding out a plant and the plant was so big that you couldn't even see the pot. But that's not, I don't, I don't know how I could mimic that with this container. Am I doing it? I don't really care about that part because the plant looks very healthy. It has multiple growths coming up from the bottom. This, I didn't say what it was called. I'm so sorry. I should just read the name for the listing of the plant. Rare variegated alocasia, blizzard, borneo, giant marble, elbow, hybrid, sport, elephant ear, six inch potted life house plant starter plant growers choice. Yep, that's what this is. That's a great name for the plant. Blizzard alocasia, alocasia blizzard. It's a variegated Borneo giant, which are one of my favorites of the alocasia. It's variegated, so I highly doubt that it's going to get very large. That would be surprising, but it should still be bigger than some of my other variegated alocasias, like the Okinawa silver. That's one that stays much smaller. This should be larger than that in theory. It's still small enough that the leaves haven't started to alocasia themselves. It's giving me much stronger Caladium vibes right now. But the newer leaves looks like two. Yeah, the two newest leaves that are in here are starting to point up. So this one and this one that's just starting to unfurl looks like they're going to stand up. Oh, it'll get there. Isn't that a fun variegation? That's all there is to this plant. I don't have anything crazy to say about it, anything that's mind blowing other than just look at it. It's beautiful. A very nice crisp white in the variegation mixed in with deep greens. Sometimes when variegation is this splotchy, like what we're seeing in here, it to me can look really dirty. It just kind of, I don't know, this looks muddy. Like the mojito elephant ear, very popular, but I don't like the variegation on it. It just looks muddy. But the white, that crispness that's in the white on this one, 
makes it just look so much more soothing and clean. I don't know if soothing is necessarily a look. That's the aesthetic that I'm getting from the plant. It's just nice, clean, soothing. You can see there's some tricoloration going on the variegation, or that could have just been some leaf damage. Hard to say for sure, I don't know. I just got it. Turning my exposure down and back up, trying to adjust it because this plant, the white on it is so intense that it's very hard to see. At least this is in my viewfinder. I wanna make sure you can actually see what I'm filming here. I did notice a couple of fungus gnats, so I'm going to water this in with some bacillus, whatever the stuff is called. I'll put it up here on the screen. Works wonderfully for killing back fungus gnats and fruit flies. I usually have to apply it one time at once, then maybe again uh, about a month later, but usually that does the trick. This drainage dish, that's really working great, isn't it? Holding in all the water, not making a mess here. It needed to be watered in anyways. Didn't hurt to throw some of that bacteria in there to help cut back on fungus gnats and some other types of problems that can sometimes be in the soil, mostly nematode things, which is highly unlikely to be an issue, but never know. It is definitely in a six inch pot. I can't say how long it's been in the six inch container. I'm guessing not very long. I'm not going to tamper with the roots, so it is tempting. I want to dig in there, see what's going on with the roots. That wouldn't make any sense. Alocasias, they don't ship well, so I am, for one, just relieved to see that the plant showed up with a container, because, you know, there was the Aeonium over here that was shipped last week. Bare root, not just bare root, but roots stripped for cleaning purposes. That's what the seller says, for cleaning purposes, to help reduce risks of transmitting insects to you. They remove the, a lot of the roots. That's, I could digress from that. I'm just, it, it should have been sold as a cutting. That's all. Just sell it as a cutting if you're gonna rip all the roots off the plant. With this, that would have been horrible, right? Alocasias, they don't like their roots to be messed with. It would have been a disaster had somebody done that with this thing. It, you can ship them bare root once they're much larger and start to establish some sort of corm or tuber. It can take alocasias a longer time to develop a nice healthy root system. That's not necessarily true of all alocasias. The ones that get much larger and don't offset as readily, it's going to take them longer. So this one I would expect it to be about a year until it has a good sized tuber on it that I would trust for cutting back for storage. But after that, for storage, for shipping, some sort of dormancy, something along those lines, my head's in storage right now because I have some alocasias outside that I need to bring in here for winter storage. Much better to ship them in their containers, right? So I'm glad they did it. I just said forget it with the drainage dish. Just dump the water on the table. There's no reason to use it in the first place. You really don't want this sitting in a drainage dish full of water anyways, right? So you get that muck out of there. Great looking plant. I expect to see some growth out of this this winter. This heavy of variegation, I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna need to put this on one of my shelves where it'll be a little bit further from the grow lights. That's the double-edged sword with strong variegation, right? Is that there's not as much chlorophyll in the plant, so they're going to need more light or more regular feeding. They're going to need support with getting nutrient compared to a plant that's not variegated. But if you give them too much light, then they're gonna scorch. Even if that's less light than the plant would have wanted if it weren't variegated, you know what I mean? So like, even sometimes fairly gentle light on some of these crazy variegated sports can burn the heck out of the leaves and make things not look so nice. I guess we'll find out together how tolerant it is of the light. From what I gather from other people who are growing these, they're able to put them under pretty bright light without any issues. When I have this outdoors, I'll let it get probably filtered morning sun and just see how it likes that and slowly move it into more and more light all in all, still avoiding afternoon direct sun, especially when it's hot outside. There's a lot of white in there. Lots and lots of white. Who knows how well that variegation is going to hold on. They've been around for a minute. They're not crazy rare. I don't see them for sale very often, but compared to about a year ago, starting to see them for sale more often. So that's nice. Going to be getting to see more of these around, getting to see them when they get some size on them. Again, I'm very interested to see how the variegation holds true on them as they get larger, because there are a lot of plants where their variation can be really strong when they're smaller, and then when they start to grow, it really fizzles out an awful lot. There are pruning tactics you can do to keep the variegation up on the plant. So if it throws out a leaf that's not variegated, want to cut that off, maybe cut back a couple down below that if you have enough leaves to do that. Variegation on it reminds me a lot of the Blizzard uh, Philodendron Gigantium, which is a lovely one. It's one of my favorites, but this is an alocasia, alocasia, alocasia. I don't care how you say it. Upright elephant here. You just want to go with the old school naming on it. They will be so cool when they are larger. So the philodendron 
pretty easy plant to grow. The Gigantium's not a fussy one. Makes for a pretty good house plant. But the Elkacea, the things I like about them is they can get absolutely massive. So can the Gigantium Philodendrons. But I would say the Borneo Giant Elkaceas, they will get bigger and they will do it much more quickly. And when they get too big to be kept inside, you can move them outdoors where they're so much easier to grow. And then in the fall and winter, when that's not ideal to have them outside, if you live someplace that's probably, I would say, north of zone nine, probably eight. You can give it a try in eight if you're very careful with them. Okay, now it's, it's started to turn to be about how to protect them during the winter time. I'm in zone seven as of a few days ago. You can cut them back, dig them up, cut the roots off of them, throw them in a big lawn bag or paper bag, stuff them in a basement someplace cool, dark, and dry, and then replant them when the day lengths are getting longer into a pot or back outdoors when things are frost free. It's just so much easier and you get such a really big, cool looking, fun plant out of it. Very pretty, love the variegation on it. It's that messy, splotchy variegation that I'm not normally drawn to, but I want to see what this looks like on a gigantic alocasia leaf. That'll be a ways off in the future. So I have to get it through the winter. And I would imagine by the end of next summer, summer 2024, I would hope that this would be at least three to five feet tall, but you just never know with alocasias and with the erratic weather that we have here, this will be outdoors. Should do a lot of growing, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's all. Just a fun, nice looking, pretty plant that I have to zoom way in on for the camera to even pick up on the intensity of the white inside of those sleeves. Gonna get this moved over to the grow shelves. Like I said, I'm gonna put it on one of the shelves where it's further away from the light. And I'll watch the plant and see if it looks like it's starting to stretch. If it's starting to stretch, then I'll move it to a shelf where the lights are closer to the foliage. Trial and error, but I'm gonna start with less is more while we're getting to know each other. Know what I mean? So comment down below, say hi. What's going on with your house plants? Have you grown this one? Any experience with it? The Borneo Giant in general, just a fun plant to grow. So it'll be interesting to see what goes on with this. Also, I said that three to five foot thing about it being maybe three to five feet tall by the end of the summer next year, as if this were a Borneo giant that isn't variegated. It's variegated, so I don't know. I have no idea. Hopefully it'll still get nice and big. It's not likely, but we'll see. And I have some really crazy looking, gigantic, upright, white and cream leaves on it. That'll be so nice. Not in a shady spot, but tucked back in the garden in a spot where, again, not dark, but dappled light and afternoon shade having that brilliant, clean white in there. Oh, it's gonna look so nice. Really looking forward to seeing how that looks out there. Okay, that's enough. This is just supposed to be an unboxing, but look at the plant's pretty. It's a plant shop. They did a good job shipping it. No complaints, looks good to me. A little smaller than I expected, but that's all right. It's an alocasia, it's gonna grow. The plant itself looks very healthy. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.